So welcome, brave adventurers, to Loresmith Studios, where the art of storytelling and the game of Dungeons and Dragons converge. In, affili in affiliation with Hero Forge, the masters of custom miniatures, and powered by the incredible virtual tabletop technology of Tailspire, try saying that five times fast, as the dice roll and fate hangs in the balance, prepare for an unforgettable journey through a world of magic, mystery, and epic storytelling. Uh, we'll go ahead and, uh, jump right in. Uh, your party has been summoned to the great city of Veritas, home to a powerful council of elders in Arlencroft Grove. The council is in dire need of your assistance. A powerful curse has fallen over the city. The council has been unable to find a solution and has turned to you for help. You have made your ways from the furthest reaches of the region, some of you from even other countries. You all have arrived and have traveled through the city to the home of the elders in Veritas. As you walk into the large timber and stone building, see the council chamber is adorned with ancient tapestries and flickering torches, casting dancing shadows across the room. The first of you to enter is Bubos. Chris, what does your uh, character look like? Well, he is a small little halfling covered in robes and dirt. And that's really it. He's kind of hooded, so you don't really see too much on his face or anything. But when he burst, when he comes in, he immediately goes, Bubos is here! Okay. <clears throat> uh... Tyrus, you naturally follow shortly after Bubos. Uh, what does Tyrus look like? Well, he is a minotaur, very muscly, and uh, he's the only thing he's wearing is a loincloth. And he would say to Bubos after, why do you walk? Why do you not ride on the contraption on my back? We have the thing, Bubos. I must keep you safe. But but we're going into a building. You, you can't ride your, your mounts in, in a building. Hmm. True. <clears throat> All right. Uh, next, we have Kothar. Uh, the lizard folk enters the building. Uh, Tyler, what does your character look like? He is a six foot eight tall lizard folk, as said. Dark screen scales, just in dirty robes, and uh, puts the first scrap around it and a staff on his back. He just walks in, he looks around. Human dwellings are so strange. He just walks in, not sure what to do with himself. Okay. And then, uh, finally, we have, uh, Rithixar. What does your character look like, Will? Uh, Rithizar is a fairly short, pretty scrawny, uh, pale humanoid. Uh, he has red hair and a red goatee, and he is very sullen and sunken in eye sockets, and very, uh, very decrepit almost uh, skin tones a lot of liver spots uh, it is clear he's aged but it almost seems as if he is aged uh, unnaturally okay uh, seated at a round weathered table or the Council of Elders, their faces etched with wisdom and concern. You stand uh, before them, your weapons and magical artifacts gleaming under the dim light. Uh, you note that the woman on the left would be Elder Josephine, the person that actually wrote you uh, each your individual letters. She's the leader of the Council. She clears her throat and addresses you in a solemn tone. Brave adventurers, we have called upon each of you for your unique skills and renowned powers. 
The threat we face is dire. We require your aid to overcome it. She glances at uh, you, Rithixar. Um, it is no secret that you possess understanding of the darker arts. However, we have called you here not to condemn, but to offer you a chance to use that knowledge for the greater good. Uh, mm, yes, yes, greater good. Another elder you would recognize as Elder Benjamin, based on the letter you received, leans forward, his eyes filled with sorrow. One of our former council members, Lord Alistair, has turned to the path of darkness. He has delved into dark magics, and in his malevolence, he has cursed three innocent souls from our town. These curses have plunged them into permanent slumber, where they lie trapped, their lives hanging in limbo. Elder Josephine's uh, voice trembles with determination. We beseech you, adventurers, to undo this dark curse and awaken these afflicted individuals. Time is of the essence, as every moment that passes deepens their sleep and binds their soul. Right, well, let me ask first, if I may. There is a substantial reward attached to this. My services do not come cheap. Oh, yes, you will be justly rewarded. We have faith in your abilities and trust that you will use your skills to restore balance and free our beloved townsfolk from this curse. Lord Alistair must be stopped. His curse brought to an end. Elder Benjamin uh, addresses you, uh, Rithixar. You will be justly rewarded with anything that you ask that we are capable of offering. Oh, uh, see, I like the answer you gave there. Uh, will we be discussing the reward before or after? Well, we can discuss the details now, but time is of the essence, and we would prefer if you would begin. Uh, well, then one simple question. Would you have the ability to get me off this damnable country? Oh, well, I'm certain that we can arrange travel for you to anywhere in possibly most of Elmir. There are certain places where we just don't have the ships capable to go. I've heard enough. I think I may be able to offer my services. That is good, reassuring, and the rest of you? We will find the villain and wake the people. Yes, Bugles? Yes, that sounds fantastic. Fantastic. That's what we will do then. Oh, well, this one does not have skills in artistry or waking people, but sure. Fear As not, eating a finger. Man. I will wake them with my mighty arms. I'm, I'm not exactly sure that's a good idea, them. but all right. Well, they're asleep, yes. Something. All we have to do is wake them up. They are asleep with something far more potent than just a nap, you oaf. What we will do... What we will do is handle this Lord Alster, or whatnot, and I will ensure that he meets his demise, or that they are released from the curse, yes? Yes, What? whatever needs to be done. Right. Open Are for interpretation. I like these odds. this Alistair. You would like to kill him? Are we to kill him? Oh. It was a question. Well, you heard the scale back. the elders of the city, we should not condone the murder of anyone. However, should he come to an untimely demise, that would be unfortunate, but acceptable. And if he was to die, 
what would happen with his corpse. I don't know human customs. Oh, oh. um, well, we don't want it, if that's what you're asking. Don't worry. So I will take care of it. We will put it to good use. Yes. Licks his lips. You both, I am confused. Lips. How do they take care of a corpse? Uh, from my understanding, they dig a big hole and drop it in it usually. Something oh, like that. like everything else. Yeah, Fear you just dig a hole, throw it in. <clears throat> Fear not, old people. We will not mess this up because the stakes are high. God. May your courage be unwavering. Your determination unyielding. Should you succeed, you will save many innocent lives. May the divine spirits guide you on this yes, perilous journey. Yes, yes, yes. We have we have busy work to do, and okay. I am not getting any younger. Very, very well. Right. So where are we going? Well, uh, here, and he hands you a uh, map uh, of the city uh, that has some locations marked on it, and he also gives you a list of the people um, that you who's, are who's going he to the go map see. to. Uh, he just hands it in the general direction for anyone to take. Oh, okay. Bubios takes it and looks at it and goes, yeah, this this is... Someone else take this and just kind of holds it back. <laughs> Let me see. Cyrus holds it up. Hmm. Drawings. Here. Hothar oh, hands it. <laughs> picks it up. He looks at it. Hmm. Yes. Rithazar is going to Answer pinch the to bridge of his nose. <laughs> And go, please, just put the damn map in your pack, and let's go. Don't know what use this has, but okay. Puts it in his pack. Uh, four locations uh, of note on the map. Uh, the first is the home of Farmer Thomas, who is on the list that he made with. Um, he is houses to the south. Um, another is uh, Widow Agnes, whose house is to the northeast. Uh, a th the third is Baker Sarah, with uh, she's kind of a western two-story house. Uh, and then uh, Lord Alastair's home as well. Hmm. The Lord's home is marked. He's left it barren. Uh, yes, he. Uh seems that he had no longer had any use for it. And you're not sure where he is now? Uh, no, he disappeared somewhat mysteriously. He did leave all of his belongings, and we just didn't think that we should move anything until you got here. I feel that that would be our best place to start in our search. I mean, I don't know. Let's do this. Is obviously excited, but has no idea what he's excited for. Uh, which direction was the Lord's house again? Uh, Lord's house is basically north, straight up, uh, straight up the road. Um, <coughs> take a left at the first left and then take another right. And then, uh, straight all the way back. Come then. We shall approach the Lord's house. First left, and then... Something about a right. I'm not very good with directions. I know which way north is. You pass by a bunch of markets and shops and uh, homes from residents. Uh, as you approach the gates to the large manor of Lord Alistair, um, you are uh, you notice that there are two guards, uh, one posted above the gate and one posted at the gate. Uh, and the first guard says, Oh! Oh, who goes there? You're a right creepy-looking fellow, aren't you? 
Mm, insult aside, I have been hired by the council to uh, inspect the home so we can ascertain the location of the lord that has gone missing and is believed to be the reason why uh, some of your fellow townsfolk have fallen under a curse. Oh. Well, did I give you any paperwork or anything that would prove who you say you are? Yes, they gave us the map. Yes, they, oh. they gave us a map. Is that a like fucking cool. minotaur? That's paper. Are you like a human? Yours. Are you do, do you ask simple questions often? No, I don't know. You seem to do so now. Right, I'll uh, I'll just get out of your way then. And that is much appreciated, moves. young man. And uh, the gates open. I, did I would this suggest the human uh, called the horn human a minotaur. I would suggest paying more attention. Are you saying that out loud, Tyrus? Or... Yes. Ah, then Tyrus will turn to you and say, "That is what I am. I am a minotaur." <clears throat> is that the word for big horned human? Uh, kinda. Bubos, am I human? Sorry, my audio thing was messed up. Try again. You both am I human? Says Tyrus. Uh, no, 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 you're a minotaur. Why would you think you're human? What? The the lizard human one asks if minotaur means human with horns, and I may am I maybe? No, no, you're a minotaur. You're just a minotaur. Don't don't overcomplicate it. But it Fantastic. seems more complicated. Think of it as I a have so many names for, for human. Mm, he's not a human. He's a minotaur. I see. I see. Kind of like how you're a lizard and not a human. Yeah. He's a minotaur. I am a and not a human. I am lizard folk. Yes, I we all know you're a scale back. Hear your scales. I uh, I approach the door and I attempt to open it. Okay. Uh, oh, yep. You open it. Um, <clears throat> as you cross the threshold uh, into the house of the esteemed lord, your senses immediately detect an unsettling atmosphere that cloak the opulent surroundings. Mm. Adorning the walls, subtle yet disturbing touches catch your eye. Paintings depicting eerie landscapes and shadowy figures seem to come alive when observed closely. Sculptures and intric intricate tapestries showcased skeletal forms entwined in an intricate dance of death. The presence of these morbid artworks hint at a macabre fascination. Pupos, why is there a bear on the floor? I, I, I don't... Why is there a bear on the floor? And where is the rest of it? It why seems would, flat. Why would someone take its skin and not use it and put it in front of a fire? I, 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 I am I, surrounded I, by simpletons. Uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to roll an Arcana check on some of these paintings to see if I can figure out what kind of uh, magical artistry is working in them. It's a twenty. Uh, <clears throat> it looks almost as if the paintings are not necessarily paintings uh, but actually picture frames that are magically enchanted to house a person's soul hmm a man after my own tastes I appreciate his style uh 
can I roll a history to see if I can recognize any of the individuals in the paintings? Or are they too macabre, uh, would, as you call it? Yeah, it would, to, it would be too macabre. It'd be too... Uh, they're too skeletal. Uh, and they're too, yeah, yeah, they're too far right. gone, basically. All right. Uh, as you venture further, uh, you're seeing bookshelves... Uh, further into the home um, rifling through you stumble upon extensive collection of forbidden tomes and grimoires uh, dust covered shelves display ancient texts with titles that spoke of forbidden arts and necromantic rituals whispers almost seem to emanate from the pages of some of them as if the knowledge contained within yearned to be unleashed. Mm. I'm going to roll a uh, an investigation check to see if I might be able to figure out any of them that uh, might actually be something that is not necessarily knowledge that I currently have. That is okay. a 22. It seems as though in your travels, you have acquired much of this knowledge. There's there's not much that surprises you here. Okay. Even with his extensive collection, nothing seems to be new. He seems like he's got good taste, but he seems like he's got less experience. Shame. On the table, across from you, atop numerous stacks of books, a solitary tome commands attention from you with its mysterious luminescence. A particular glow enveloping its pages, casting an ethereal radiance that dances upon the room's surface. Nestled upon its clasping lock, a sigil of intricate design shimmered with arcane energy. Its mere presence defying gravity as the sigil hovers just above the clasp. Um... Is that what I think it is? Yeah, okay. I am going to turn around and I'm going to tell uh, Tyrus. Tyrus, take your uh, take your uh, abnormally large hands and take this book and open it. Ubos, why does the strange man want me to touch a book? Maybe he's not strong enough to pick it up, and you are mighty! Oh, so Most I am! Most humans are rather frail. Indeed. Worry not, small frail one. I will grab the book for you. And so, he's gonna reach out and grab the book. <laughs> Hyrus, as you... And open it! Pick up the book. So you're gonna, you're just gonna try and open it. Uh, I'm gonna for, grab just, the book first. Gra all right, <laughs> grab the book. You got it in your hands. I'm going to turn and look at him, and I'm going to present it to him. Okay. I'm going to pantomime opening the book, kind of giving him a suggestive, open it. So Tyrus is gonna grab the cover and then open it so that and hold it in both hands as if the pages were showing him. Uh, as you attempt to open the book, you are stopped. I'm going to need a strength check. Sure. Oh, ho. Ah. Roll. How's a 15? You struggle, and the book resists you. It's impossible! I am mighty! I cannot open this book. Hmm. 
I see. Uh, well, let me try something here. I'm going to cast Counterspell on the book to see if I can dispel the magic that it uh, has attached to it. Okay. Uh, as you counter the spell that's placed on it, the sigil shifts and then slowly dissolves, fading away, the lights from the book dissipating. Now, Tyrus is continuously struggling with this still. Uh, so... As the sigil disappears, Tyrus, the book flies open and uh, you almost lose your balance. I have opened it! Behold, little one. Good job, Musclehead. Now, if you won't mind, I would like to peruse the book. You may, uh... I look around real quick to see if there's anything that might entertain him and go, uh... Find something to entertain yourself with? I will hand him the book and rush over to Bubos. Bubos, did you see? I opened the book. I am mighty. You opened the book! Ha ha ha! Oh, by the 12. Uh, so, now that you have the book open, I think so. Um, you're reading the, what what's contained in the book? Yes. I'm assuming. Okay. I also will need an arcana check to see if you know what this is. Ugh. I got an 18 on that one. Mm, give me a history check as well. We'll combine those. Oh my god, I got a 14 on that one. <laughs> Come on. Why you gotta do this to me, 20? Don't be like that. Yeah, I'm gonna say you don't know what this is. It's a little bit beyond your normal scope of knowledge. Uh... But I will say that the book kind of radiates an aura of magic. Uh, one page that is bookmarked, uh, your attention is drawn to. The Soporos Hex is a haunting curse woven by the dark arts of necromancy capable of plunging its victims into a deep and rel relentless slumber. Crafted by a malevolent ne necromancer seeking to manipulate the boundaries between life and death, this, cur this curse inflicts an insidious sleep that steals away consciousness and veils its victims in an eternal night. The curse requires taking the individual's most prized possession, something they value above all else. When cast upon an unfortunate soul, the victim succumbs to an impenetrable slumber, seemingly trapped between the realms of dreams and wakefulness. The cursed individual remains trapped with their dormant state, their body suspended in an unbroken repose. During this profound sleep, the victim is immune to external stimuli, rendering them impervious to the touch, sound, or any form of influence from, wake from the waking world. Breaking the soporos or X is a daunting task as the curse is anchored to the necromancer's dark magic. The necromancer's demise or the return of the individual's most valued possession are often the only path to release a victim from this malefic enchantment. Time, however, becomes an enemy as the longer the victim remains asleep, the deeper their connection to the dream realm grows, making their eventual return to the waking world increasingly uncertain. And that's uh, the end of this paragraph that you read I'm going to take the book and I'm going to uh, place it into my satchel okay and I am going to uh, step over to this door here to open it up <clears throat> um, the rest of you, uh, what are you guys doing? Looking around? Anything? So, Bubo is gonna look at Tyrus and just be like, hey, let's go upstairs! And Ooh! Goes up the stairs. Or 
get stuck trying. Okay. And, uh, Tothar, what are you doing? Uh, is this a chest right beside me? Yeah. Can this be opened? He's just going to try to open it. Certainly. Opening it. Uh, it's got a lock on it. I see. I see. Oh, he's going to leave it alone then. Okay. Uh, Bubos is going to, uh, what's the word here? Uh, check this desk, see if it's got anything of any kind of anything. Okay. Uh, the desk has a journal that's written in uh, plain hand. Um, in the journal, there's uh, the most recent uh, entry. I have unearthed the secrets of a long forgotten castle, lost in the annals of time. Its very existence tantalizes me, promising hidden artifacts and esoteric lore that could further my mastery of the necromantic arts. This abandoned castle, known as Castle Mortis, lies in the depths of the Veritas countryside. It has long been abandoned. Its halls now echoing only with the whispers of forgotten souls. Tales of its dark history reach my ears, fueling my desire to unlock its secrets and harness the dormant energies that lie within. The journal's pages unfold, revealing a uh, meticulously drawn map, sketched with precision and marked with like cryptic symbols. The map outlines uh, uh, the winding paths and treacherous terrain uh, that would guide your way to Castle Mortis. Uh, speaks of a portion of destroyed wall guarded by undead sentinels that defy the natural order. Within uh. the castle's decaying walls, an abundance of forgotten knowledge and ancient artifacts await discovery. It is rumored that a library hidden within its depths houses tomes of arcane wisdom that have withstood the test of time. And that's it. All right. So Pubos is going to, after he reads it, he's going to wait. Is Tyrus asleep? Okay, he's, I couldn't see him. So he's going to look at Tyrus and go, "I found something amazing!" and sticks it in his bag. We shall show this to the Dark One. <laughs> and then continues to go upstairs. Okay. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Um, so he's going to go over to the bookshelf first and um, as you it. get up onto the uh, top floor oh. the top tower floor offers a breathtaking panorama of the surrounding lands uh, a tall arch windows provide a commanding view of the sprawling countryside bathed in the golden hues of the setting sun a majestic writing desk dominates the space it is a masterpiece of craftsmanship, carved from ebony, wood, and embellished with intricate, curling motifs that depict scenes of agony and despair. The desk surface is smooth, as if it has been carefully maintained despite its foreboding presence. Resting upon the desk lies an open journal, its pages filled with meticulously written text. All right. <clears throat> So you go over to the bookshelf first. Yep, There's another small the book here, Bubos. All right, give me a moment. I want to see if there's one over here. Looks at all the books. There seems to be a lot of books over here. Uh, he does. He holds out his stick, and because he doesn't know any better, he uses a nature check to see if anything is out of sorts with him. Uh, go I ahead and roll me a nature is, check. But... It's 26. <laughs> With a 26, this particular shelf was made of a tree that had been tortured. He, he goes to the shelf. No, you poor tree. Why? Why would they do this to you? Who hurt a tree? Where's the tree? This, this shelf, it was, 
It was created by a tree that had been tortured. Mm. Oh, that's just disheartening. Why would people do this? Well, that's this not bad. This desk is made of tree. <laughs> I'm sorry. I would hope that most desks are made of tree. <laughs> sorry, I had to mute. <clears throat> All right, so yeah, I'm gonna go up to the desk and uh, look at the book there that I can, you know, barely see with my hide advantage. Don't worry, just clamber up on the desk. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, as you clamber up on the desk, uh, you notice that it is a journal. Uh, that this journal, though, uh, the script in the journal is the same, but almost different in a way. It's more elegant, yet more twisted as well. Um, the journal is uh, worn leather that hints that it's like very old, ancient. Uh, the pages bear numerous annotations, smudges of ink, and occasional drops of wax. In the most recent entry, it says this. This journal entry serves as a testament to my grand design. The culmination of years spent traversing realms and acquiring unimaginable power. I, Zion Hallowedbane, conqueror of realms, now reveal the depths of my ambitions. I conquered the realm I inhabited as a once mortal man. I have arrived in this realm, its vulnerable state, like a ripe fruit, ready to be plucked. My insatiable hunger for dominion led me to share my former identity and don the cloak of a lord, a role that has become synonymous with my name. In my native realm, I reveled in the glory of conquest, each country, each plain, each world falling before me like dominoes. But mere worlds could no longer satiate my thirst. I yearn for greater realms, a tapestry of dominions woven together under my supreme rule. And now I leave this here and return to my realm fortress. Any that dares to find me, any that dares to stand before me will perish. A portal to my fortress lay in a place that should challenge you. Know this, dear readers who dare witness the words of Zion Hallowed Rain. There's no escape, no hope for salvation. I am the architect of my own fate, and this realm shall become another realm within my dominion. I have arrived, and none shall stand in my way. What's it say, Bubos? Man. It's dark and gloomy. Let me tell you what. He thinks he's just gonna come up in this world and destroy things. <laughs> Got another thing for him. Puts it in maybe the back. we. Oh, we're gonna show that one too to the guy Might who likes well. the books. I mean, he likes books, so let's give him some books. He likes books. <laughs> All right, and we uh, uh, return we have to uh, difficulty Rithic here. <laughs> uh, I'll get you guys down. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Both. Take us there all the way go. down, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Rithix are after basically netting nothing inside the uh, supply cabinet other than menial supplies that would do you no good anyway. <clears throat> you come back out as uh, Tyrus and Bubos come down the stairs. Mmm. Uh, done so exploring the castle, have we? Mr. Uh, Spooky. He has books for you. Yes, pulls out both journals, one in each hand. I found these journals of things. One of them's really dark and gloomy, and the other one gives like this weird, crazy location. You may want to look into this. Maybe you can figure something out from it. Crazy location, perhaps where his uh, his new home has been set. So, uh, due to the fact that I have an intelligence that is much higher than most characters would have. 
as well as the feature uh, Keen Mind. I'm going to assume to some degree that give me the warrant of uh, eidetic memory and speed reading. So I'm going to quickly traverse the book and gather most all of the knowledge that I can. Okay. Um, so would I be able to figure out where his castle is? Uh, yeah. There's a map. Yeah, there's a map. <laughs> All right, then that is the first book. Uh, uh, same. I'll, I'll say. I'll say. Rithixar opens the book, opens the journal, reads through the entire thing, and then through an elaborate explanation, tells Bubos how he has discovered the location by based on. Uh, where the ink came from in the journal based on the age of the page uh, and then based on the uh, uh, location of certain smells and things and uh, tells you that he's discovered where the castle is located at and Bubos, you <laughs> then hand him the map that leads to the yep. castle. Yeah, I hand him the map go, yeah, it's right here, hands map. be first anyways second book i uh i rifle through it same thing and i go through and uh do i with a history or arcana check would i be able to r recognize who zion might be no okay i'm not gonna bother rolling then <clears throat> So, I'm going to take a mental note of that and go, hmm, so he has fancied himself ruler of the world, I assume. And uh, I so admit to some degree that that is not exactly what I was expecting. We will have to find a way to handle this situation and handle it quickly. So, uh, Bubos. let Bubos. us be off. Bubos. Turns, turns the tires. He, yeah. He got all that from a book. I mean, I. Words? He's. I, he's smart. scary. Mm, he, he not quite as scary really... as the individual we're going to meet, <clears throat> I promise you that. Ah! You're not supposed to hear me, spooky man. He was whispering. <laughs> All humans are fleshy. He must He's really wishing. like books. Is he one of those book lover people you told me about? The ones that, like, it's a, a biblioteca or something? Maybe. He seems like the type. So, right here, Ubos mounts up on uh, the little <laughs> back riding thing on uh, Tyrus. Uh, as you exit Lord Alistair's house, uh, the guard says... But would you like to check out the the one of the homes of the the cursed individuals? She does live right here. Um. Well, I'm going to I'm going to give you a little hint here, sir. Uh, find out what their most prized possessions are, and find a way to return these prized possessions to them. They may not have them in town anymore. And we are going to go meet the uh, the foul individual who has stolen them, and that should break the curse. Oh, well, how am I supposed to find out what their most prized possession is? I'm gonna peek up right here. I don't think he's as smart as you. No, Dang no, this, uh, that's why he should probably bar. ask questions, preferably while I am gone. But what questions should I be asking? Why do humans have prized possessions? Oh my god, alright, let me put it to you this way in as clear of a fashion as I can. I know who caused this curse, and I am going to go try to stop this curse. You uh. are a town guard. Which means you will stay here and guard the town while I am gone. Yes? Well, 
technically that is my position. However, mm -hmm. I don't take kindly to the disrespect that I believe that you're throwing my way. I don't quite take kindly to the fact that you don't want to help me in my task that I have been assigned to save your town. Well, as you said, my job is to guard the town now, isn't it? Not to coddle the feelings of little babies. Tyrus, Tyrus is going to raise his hand. And he's going to say, Mr. Spooky, I have a question. I'm getting a headache. What? What is it? We, the the old people want us to wake up the sleeping people. Shouldn't yes. we go see sleeping people? Fine. I said we'll shut everyone up. Something about time is of the essence, but apparently not today. This house, yes. In here. That. Right, yep. Right. That'd be the house of Widow Agnes. Widow Agnes. Lovely name. Uh, I'm going to go in. I'm going <laughs> to uh, sit down at the table and go, okay. uh, Gentlemen, e explore the house for a moment or two. Uh, you're all greeted by a cozy interior that reflects uh, her nurturing <clears throat> spirit. The living room boasts a fireplace surrounded by comfortable armchairs and shelves lined with well-loved books. Soft sunlight filtering through the lace curtains, casting gentle patterns on the wooden floors. The walls are adorned with uh, uh, hand-painted landscapes and family portraits telling stories of rich and fulfilling life. Uh... Their shelves are, however, covered in a layer of dust now. The books lie undisturbed, their pages frozen in time. And as you go upstairs, Widow Agnes herself lies in her bed. Wise eyes shut. <laughs> 